What's up guys, this is your boy DZD, aka The Drink King, Purple World Entertainment, and you are live inside the Dungeon Palace Studios yet again. I just want to say real quick, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Uh, if you have not subscribed already, please do so because I have a lot more content that's going to be coming to you guys real soon. Click that bell notification, that way you can stay up to date with that content that we're going to be dropping for you. Today I have a special video for you. This video is absolutely lit. One of my subscribers asked me to make a detailed beat making video. I mean a video where I show my screen, a video where I show you exactly what I'm doing on the MPC, a video where you're gonna see what I do to sample beats to make them so hot. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be dropping for you today. I'm also gonna sprinkle a little commentary in it. That way you guys can hear me explain exactly what's going on on the screen. So sit back, relax. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the sample, load it in. What we're going to do now is shrink the sample down to like an, a four bar loop. That way we can work with it a little bit better. Okay, now that we have a perfect loop. We're going to uh, shorten the sample, that way all we can work with is just this loop. So we're going to discard everything from off the other end of the sample. I'm thinking the sample is a bit too high, so I want to lower it uh, a few half steps. And then I'm going to speed it back up with time stretching. Now when you lower the key of the sample, it's going to slow the sample down in time. So the time stretching is going to help speed it back up, but still pre preserve that lower key. So now we have the sample in the lower key, and now we still preserve the time of the sample. So it still plays at a nice pace. So now we can start chopping it up. Now I'm using a lazy chop feature here just for the sake of this video, just to speed everything up. But normally I pick pieces of the sample, specific pieces when I want to do my own thing. But now we're going to just shrink these samples up, shrink all of these chops up to where they start and fall on the spots that we want them to fall. Now a quick trick that I learned is just to work with the ending of the chops, especially when you're lazy chop. Because the ending of the chop and the beginning of the next chop, they are both on the same exact pad. If you notice the red and green, they're both on the, on the, same, exact, the same exact beat. So they're going to move together. So I just work with the ending, that way I know that the, next, the, next, the beginning of the next chop falls where I need it to be. So now we're going to just test out the chops just to make sure everything is nice. Now we're going to convert this to a new program using the slices that we just chopped up. I like to keep everything nice and tidy, so we're going to go ahead on and label this our high-end sample. I'm just making sure the pads are on full velocity, so that way no matter how hard I hit the pads, I get the full volume of every sample. Now let's adjust the grid to a four bar loop, and then we're going to see if we can come up with a nice sequence that we can play.
Okay, now we have our sequence. Just for the purposes of this video, I didn't change too much when I played the sequence. I just wanted to get a nice little loop going, a nice little sequence going, so that way we can lay something else down over it. Now I'm gonna go to track three, and I'm gonna label this my low sample. Track two is high, track three is low. What I'm doing here is duplicating all of the events from track two to track three, all of our MIDI information. And then I'm gonna duplicate the actual program itself. That way the chops can be on track three as well. Now once the program is duplicated, you'll notice that it gets a little louder simply because both tracks will be playing the same exact thing. But I'm gonna solo one and then we're gonna just work on one with high pass filters and then the next with low pass filters. Let's do some housekeeping and rename our new programs. We're gonna label one high and one low. Let's also label our first program drums because that program is gonna be put on our track one for our drums. Now let's go to our high sample track. We're gonna solo it, and then we're gonna put our high pass filter on it. That way we can adjust it to taste. The trick is to adjust it to where it chops off all of the low end, but it leaves just enough mid and enough high-end information as well. Now it's time to work on our low sample track. And you guessed it, we're gonna solo that and we're gonna put the low pass filter on it. Now we're gonna chop off all of that high end out of this track, and then I like to leave both of the, uh, the filters up, that way I can kinda adjust each one and get it to blend exactly how I want. Now when you're working with your filter tracks, sometimes the volume can get a bit low. So what I like to do is pull up a saturation plugin and use that and that kind of gives it a bit more volume without adjusting the actual volume of the track. So what we're gonna do now is work with just the filters. We're gonna blend them together and I do that using the track mute feature of the MPC. So when I put it in the track mute feature, what that allows me to do is it allows me to mute each track. I'm able to play one separate or play them both at the same time. That way I can blend them in nicely. Now that we have our filter tracks nice, we can move on to our drums. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our track one and label that drums. Now it's time to pick out some nice drum sounds. What I like to do is leave the track running and kind of browse through the sounds in my browser. That way I can hear the sounds as the track is playing. Then I can pick out whatever I want, whatever I like. I just load it to a pad and I keep going through it like that.
Let's lay down some hi-hats now. So let's put it on note repeat. That way we can throw some triplets in the mix. Let's get some percussion sounds going. Let's throw in our tight snare. Now let's lay down a kick and a clap pattern. I'm kind of feeling this boom sound. So I want to throw that in there real quick. Let's do it. Now we've been working only listening with our low sample, but let's throw the high sample in and see how she works. And there you have it, a basis for a solid track. Now all you have to do is throw a bass line in it, maybe some instruments on top, and you're ready to rock. That concludes the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. By all means, hit me up, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of the video, let me know what you think of the beat. I really appreciate any feedback that you're giving me. Again, if you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now, click that bell notification, that way you can stay up to date with the content that I'm going to be bringing to you. Also, follow me on Instagram at The Drink King. Thank you guys for tuning in once again. This is your boy DZD, aka The Drink King, Purple World Entertainment, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios, and I will catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.